All right, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, our knowledge now of enols and enolates and analogs and look at how they can act as nucleophiles. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at the alpha carbon as a nucleophilic atom. So enols and enolates are nucleophilic, and they can react with electrophiles at the oxygen or alpha carbon atoms. So the typical kinds of electrophiles that will react with the oxygen atom are, are known as hard electrophiles. So they will typically have more have a very uh, concentrated positive charge. They'll be strongly ionic, and so those will include um, things like proton sources. So electrophiles that have more of a delta positive charge on them, partially positive carbon atoms, for example, will tend to react more at the carbon position, and that's the kind that we're going to see most often in this course. So it's a little bit like the collapse of a tetrahedral intermediate. Pi bond acts as the, the nucleophilic uh, source of electrons reacting with that electrophilic atom. And it's the same mechanism whether, we're, uh, whether it's an enol or an enolate reacting. And in the case of the enol, typically there would be a subsequent deprotonation step. Okay, so in each case, those pi electrons are forming a new bond between the carbon and the electrophile. So the principles of reactivity are parallel to what we've seen in other reactions, and specifically that means that the nucleophile and electrophile pair need to be sufficiently reactive for a reaction to occur. If both of them are too weak, um, the reactivity of at least one of them needs to be increased, because if both of them are too weak or too stable, too low energy, it means there's not enough energy there to surpass that activation energy required for a reaction. So a key idea to keep in mind here is that enols are weak nucleophiles and that enolates are fairly strong nucleophiles. And that means when they react that the enol can react with, uh, needs to react with a strong electrophile. It won't be able to react with something that's a, with a weak electrophile. And then the enolate for its uh, part, because it's already a strong nucleophile, it can react with a weak electrophile or it can react with a strong electrophile. The strong, strong certainly works. Now the problem with a really reactive system of, of two really strong, two really reactive species is that you can get over addition or over reaction. Even the products of a first reaction step can still be quite reactive and so they can go on to react with other things. So we'll see an example of that in a, in a minute. So in this course, so in this course, we're going to be seeing three main types of electrophiles the halogens, the alkyl halides, and the carbonyl reactions. And really you've already seen these mechanisms just with other kinds of nucleophiles. So the halogens are gonna take the form X2, and these are very strong electrophiles. If you remember back to organic one, these would even react with alkenes, which are relatively weak um, nucleophiles, and they would react to um, give halogenation products. So the same thing holds true with enols. Enols are a bit like alkenes. In fact, they're kind of souped up alkenes because they're, they're alkenes that have this electron donating group on them that makes them even more nucleophilic. So an enol, that weak nucleophile, can react with that strong electrophile. And it's gonna be the same mechanism every time. So lone pair on the oxygen comes down pi electrons react with one of the, the halogen atoms and the bond breaks. Okay, and then our final step, there'd be ordination there. Okay, so we formed those, those electrons from the pi bond have formed that new bond between the alpha carbon and the halogen. So the reaction is exactly the same with the alkyl halides, only this time the alkyl halides are weak electrophiles. So you remember that these alkyl halides reacted, primary and secondary ones in particular, um, or methyl, reacted uh, in the SN2 reaction, but they're going to react, they're such weak nucle uh, with such weak electrophiles that they need a strong nucleophile to the react. And so they'll react with the enolates, which are the strong nucleophiles of that pair type, delta plus on the R, delta minus on the X. And so that's effectively an SN2 reaction. And notice each time the mechanism is essentially identical. 
I could even make the arrow look more similar each time. Okay, so with the carbonyl groups, um, in fact, the reaction is going to be really similar again. And this time, whether we use uh, the enol or need an enol or an enolate as a nucleophile depends on the reactivity of the carbonyl. And we've seen some really um, reactive electrophiles, um, like acid chlorides, where those are so reactive that they'll react even with weak nucleophiles. So that one would react with the, with the enol. But an aldehyde or an ester, those are weak enough that we need the enolates as nucleophiles, or we need to activate these first, say through protonating them, so that they could react. So the three on screen right now would react with the enol, the weak nucleophile, because they're all activated or highly reactive electrophiles. In their neutral forms, the aldehyde, ketone, esters are weak enough electrophiles that they need a strong nucleophile pair. So this time, instead of having an X or halide as a leaving group, the leaving group's kind of the pi bond breaking and going up to the oxygen atom, but otherwise the mechanism is the same overall. Okay, so again, we form that new bond between, um, between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl. This is one spot where people often forget that alpha carbon when they draw the product. So do make sure you draw it in when you connect those atoms. Okay, and then often to finish up the reaction, there's a, uh, a, a protonation step is, is needed, either from the solvent um, or from an acidic workup. So we're going to have a series of videos that dig into the details of these three reactions separately and in, in, in more detail. So we'll look at, for example, um, doing this halogenation under acidic or basic conditions and, and the advantages and disadvantages of each one. We'll look at different kinds of alkyl halides that can be used and again the advantages and disadvantages. We'll look at variations on this carbonyl reaction known as the one I've shown is known as the aldol reaction. We'll see some related reactions and we'll also see how this aldol product can go on to eliminate and actually form a double bond between the alpha and beta carbons. There are also molecules known as enol analog. So if we think of the enol or the enolate, the activated version of the enol, okay, the key features then are the oxygen atom that has a pair of non-bonding electrons on it that can serve to, to push down and increase the electron density on that alkene. And then there's also a pi bond and that pi bond serves to make um, that alpha carbon nucleophilic. So some common analogs would simply have other atoms in the place of the oxygen. So it could be nitrogen, could be sulfur. There's still that pi bond there. Okay, as a nitrogen, it might come something like this. So this one would be called an ene, so alkene, amine. So an amine group here with an alkene over there. Um, that could be tied into a ring. It could be an oxygen atom tied into a ring instead, or with a negative charge if it were deprotonated. So these are all different possible ways to have analogs of the same type of functional group, and so we expect similar kinds of reactivity for each one. So in this video, we saw that enols, enolates, and analogs can act as nucleophiles. They can be formed under acidic or basic conditions, as we've seen previously. Those enols and enolates as nucleophiles can react at the oxygen atom or at the alpha carbon. Although in the organic two cores, we primarily examine reactions happening at that alpha carbon with softer or delta plus kind of electrophiles. And so we've seen that the enol is a weaker nucleophile and needs a strong electrophile pair, whereas the enolate is a strong nucleophile and can react even with a weak electrophile pair or a strong electrophile pair, um, which can lead to issues of overreaction. And we saw that we're going to be examining in more detail three main types of electrophiles, the halogens, the alkyl halides, and the carbonyls and derivatives. Okay, when looking for enol analogs, consider that we need uh, a heteroatom with non-bonding electrons and a pi bond. And so an enamine, aniline, um, or phenol or phenolate uh, can act, for example, as analogs.